Is the mic on? Let's get this parade started. What's wrong with Oni Adams? Episode 113. I've got to go to, uh, I've got to go to Canada. I'm going to Canada this weekend. Tomorrow I've got to fly to Halifax. I'm doing the Halifax Comedy Festival at the Spats Theater. And this is what, I, I always panic when I have to go to Canada. Because they, they do that, uh, they do their time, the military time. So when a, a flight's taken off at like uh, 2130, like my flight tomorrow is at 1140 a.m. So it says 1140, but I have to like double think. Does this mean 1140 p.m.? Like, uh, come on, Canada, tell time like us. Time to grow up, Canada. Although probably the rest of the world uh, does that military time. I just can't get used to it. I just can't. Let, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's do this. That's my favorite type of guy where they just get old and they go, screw it. I'm going Hawaiian shirt all year. <laughs> this is from my special More Than Loud that's Take on YouTube. Bahamas. Give me the whole lineup. <laughs> There's a lot of them. There's a one back there. Here's a third one. Oh my God, my audience has turned into a Jimmy Buffett concert. <laughs> Uh, full disclosure, I did this bit when Jimmy Buffett was alive. I don't want you to think I was insensitive, but I, I did run into, oh, this is such a strange story. I have so much to talk about, but I, I played that clip. I will get into this later because I have a fan named Gene who comes to a lot of my shows here in Los Angeles, and he was at this taping, and he's in this clip. He has this funny expression, but uh, told me a really tragic story that I want to share at the end as a cautionary tale for the people that live in big cities or uh, uh, about approaching. You got to be careful who you approach nowadays. That's, that's what I'm saying. I want to thank Jay Leno. Of course, Jay Leno on episode 112. What a, what a coup. I have to be honest, I was thrilled he was here a week ago. The fact that he was here in my my uh, little Shasta. By the way, I reached out to Shasta to see if they were even excited that I do a podcast out of a Shasta, and I thought maybe we could do some sort of, uh, you know, like cross-promotion because I need new cushions. My cushions are worn out. I thought, well, maybe I just... I mentioned your product, how great it is, or maybe you have some ex pride that I'm doing my podcast out of a Shasta. And uh, they said, we'll get back to you. Haven't heard anything. Haven't heard anything. But this should be the biggest podcast in the Shasta community, as far as I'm concerned. But Jay Leno was up here, and my parents loved the interview. Loved it. And it was just, it's a thrill. It's a thrill that somebody that... I've known for so long that's been so supportive that put me on his show that probably led to me, you know, having money to even purchase my home and this Shasta. It's just full circle. It's beautiful. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for being so supportive. And the fans and the listeners, you guys loved it. Loved the episode. In fact, one guy uh, uh, tip me under the video. So thank you to that guy. I have a lot of fan letters on this episode I will be talking about, but I wanted to thank Jay. And I hope that, uh, you know, I keep getting guests like that. Uh, to me, it was just really kind of cool. Listen to that, that truck backing up. I, I, I actually recorded, I'm not going to play it, but it is a truck backing up for a good... 45 seconds. That one sounds like some sort of duck mating call. But some of them go, eh, 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 eh. I recorded and I was talking over it. And I'm like, I mean, do we need this? Can people driving trucks learn how to back up and look without hitting people? Then we wouldn't have to all be annoyed by that. Eh, eh. Seems to be a lot of backing up in my neighborhood. Put, put those cameras in the back of the trucks and tell them to look. Because what happens is when you have that beep, then it just, uh, you get lazy and you go, ah, I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look as much because uh, stupid humans should hear the beeping and get out of the way. I'm, uh, I'd like those to be eliminated. That the, the, the uh, incessant, eh, 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 eh. Anyway, uh, episode 113, What's Wrong with Orny Adams? You're not going to believe who I ran into last night. I was at the, uh, what is his name? Adam Carolla. Adam Carolla had a premiere 
last night of his uh, Mr. Bertram cartoon that's streaming somewhere. And I ran into... I'm going to wait for the music to stop to tell you. But it's it's pretty... It's funny that this guy's a fan of mine. Oh, I'll give you a hint. What's his name, Kev? All right, I'll give you a hint. I went up to him and I said, hey, congratulations on the death. Who would I have said that to? Can you figure it out by the end of this theme? Oh, we have so much to talk about before I take off for Canada. Going to Canada, going to Halifax, then I'm going to Ottawa, doing a show at Yuck Yucks. Then where am I going? Boston, Massachusetts to spend Mother's Day with my mom. Or aren't I just such a such a good boy, aren't I? I really am. So I want to thank Howie Mandel, too. A lot of name dropping going on here. This is becoming the uh, What's Wrong with uh, Name Dropping podcast. But I want to thank Howie Mandel. And this ties into who I ran into last night. I want to thank Howie Mandel for the jacket, the John Varvatos jacket. I'd like to do some crossover promotion with them, too. I'd like to, I'd rather not pay for my John Varvatos clothes. Expensive. This jacket uh, that I stole from Howie was about $1,500. So last night I went to this um, premiere for Adam Carolla, friend, podcaster, podcaster with the worst lighting in the studio. And walking around, who do I run into? Cato Kalin. Remember Cato? Cato was the most famous house guest for a while. I don't know if he's been surpassed. Is there a more famous house guest than Cato Kalin yet? Huh. I don't know if I'll have to think about. But Cato, Cato was at OJ's house the night that the uh, murders happened. And he was a witness. Remember, it was, it was hysterical. He was such a character. And years ago, I was at Tom Green's house. We should have a ding for every name drop in this episode so far. I think that's the last one. Because at the end, I'm going to talk about my big fan, Gene. That's not a name drop. Uh, Gene's like just a normal guy, was a firefighter. So I, Cato, I ran into years ago at Tom Green's house, and he came right over to me. He's like, I love your comedy. And I'm sitting there thinking, Cato Kalin loves my comedy? Like, this is such a bizarre world. And we became fast friends, and we uh, keep in touch and text, and I'm thinking of having him on this podcast. Would that be interesting to you guys? What if I went from Jay Leno to Cato Kalin? So Cato, we took a picture. I got to show you the picture. Cato said, um, "Here's a picture of me and Cato." Cato said, "Oh, I, I, I love your jacket." I said, "Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I stole it from Howie Mandel." Now I didn't really steal it, but I, I go into Howie's. I've talked about it on my podcast. I go in to his wardrobe section at his office or his studio and I uh, pick through and I uh, take things. I say, Howie, how about this? Now, I call it stealing because he really doesn't have a choice. What, he's going to say no. You don't say no to Orny Adams. You say no to Orny Adams, I talk about it. You don't want to cross Orny Adams. I'm talking to you right now. So Howie generously gives me Howie is uh, almost my size, but a little bit um, more slender. So it's a little bit of a tight fit. I have to sort of stretch it. But, uh, you know, for the price of these jackets, I should just lose weight. You you know, I had to go to this uh, premiere and they said, uh, it's like sort of hip clothing. This is last night, the Corolla premiere for Mr. Bertram. And, uh, of course, I show up and people are dressed like regular people. The invitation said six to eight or six to nine. I read six to eight. I show up at uh, six ten, thinking I'm fashionably late. I was the only one there. Ended up setting up the buffet with the catering people. And uh, I can't figure out when to show up for events and look cool. Because I also don't want to miss it. But I was there way too long. And uh, so I said, Kato, yeah, I took it from Howie Mandel. Took this jacket. He loved. He loved the jacket. And uh, here, you know, you see that picture of me and me and Cato in my jacket from Howie. Cato. So I said to Cato, real name Brian, from Wisconsin. 
In fact, I did, I did a gig once and I got a bunch of Wisconsin gear and I gave it to him. Um, Brian Cato Kalen, I asked him, I said, hey, what are you doing for work? I'm always interested. Like, how do guys like that? Because he's in the public eye. So he can't sort of, uh, he can't roll up and, and not, he's a public person. And there's, people expect Cato to probably tip like he's, super famous and what is Cato driving? What's Cato wearing? Where does Cato live? Like we want to know all this stuff, even though Cato's only famous because he was a house guest. He was just a house guest. And now his life changed forever. I've stayed at people's houses and I don't want to be a witness on a double murder trial. Anyway, so I said, how do you, you know, what are you doing for work? He's telling me all these projects he's pitching or in production or sold. And, but then as I was Googling him today, because I'm like, what is he really known for? I remember he's the most famous house guest, but what is it? And it turns out he sued the National Enquirer, which is interesting because we're hearing all about the National Enquirer these days, right, with Catch and Kill. So this is from the LA Times. This is from an article from 1999. Bri- 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 Bredo, that's what I call him, not Cato, Brian and Cato together is Bredo. Brian Cato Kalen has settled a libel suit against the tabloid National Exam- Examiner over a headline that read, Cops think Cato did it. What does that imply? That to me says the cops are investigating Cato as the one. I remember this sort of. I didn't remember it last night, but now I, I, it's coming back to me. They did think maybe Cato did it as a favor to OJ. By the way, that's what I said when I saw Cato. I went up to him. I gave him a hug and I said, congratulations on the death. Because it must be such a relief that this guy's gone dead out of his life. Chapter closed for the most part. And I asked him, I said, have you spoken? Did you ever speak to OJ after that? And he said, yeah, we, I saw him in the bathroom at a, a deposition. I would have been scared for my life. Um, but you know, and I don't mean to make light of the death of OJ Simpson. Well, I mean, I, 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 but you know, you have to feel bad for his kids and family and there there is collateral to every death, even if they're, you know, uh, uh, supposedly a, uh, double murderer. Anyway, so this is from the LA times, 1999. The paper's story said, police think this is the national examiner, uh, K, uh, uh, Cato. Oh, I, I'm talking about the National Enquirer. What National Examiner's National Enquirer? Is that the same? Uh, the uh, papers, po- police think Kalen lied on the witness stand. So instead of cops think Cato did it, they think Cato lied, was what they said. Uh, Simpson's murder trial, a federal trial judge originally dismissed the libel case, saying the story itself was not lib- li- libelous or malicious. I don't know, but a landmark decision, a U.S. Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. I I never know what the the Ninth Circuit, like the Eighth Circuit, the Five, Fifth Circuit, what is all that? Malarkey. Appeals panel ruled that a headline alone could be libelous. So I guess the article probably said uh, cops and Cato did it, so they're implying that he murdered him, but really the article said they think he lied on the stand. I don't know the details. That's what I'm surmising. The court said a reader could reasonably interpret the examiner's headline to mean that the police think Kalen committed the slayings of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. Well, I would have. Why would you read beyond that headline? By the way, I'm reading an article in the New Yorker right right now. And uh, listen to this. Where are these glasses? Listen to this. A study conducted by Gloria Mark... Okay, we all know her, whoever that is. People can pay attention to one screen. We're talking about screens for an average of only 47 seconds. Well, where's the, where's the part I really want to talk about? Where's this part? Oh, God. I circled it. ADD has tripled. This is an article from the New Yorker called The Battle for Attention. And, uh, oh, here it is. This is what I meant to, this is what I meant to say instead of what I just said. 
Consumers' span of attention is now believed to be less than eight seconds. That is less than the attention span of a goldfish. We have the attention span of a goldfish. Congratulations, humans. We did it. We did it. Does that mean if you put us in a uh, fish bowl, we grow to the size of the fish bowl just like the goldfish do? That's what I want to know. This article's depressing. It's all about advertising and how they know our habits and how it's getting worse. Film pacing. Yeah, you've noticed this with films. Scenes are really fast now. A lot of music underneath it. Film pacing has accelerated with the average length of a shot decreasing. In music, the mean length of a top-performing pop song has declined by more than a minute between 1999 and 2020. Um, there's been a... This is a... Uh, but alarms of late have grown more urgent. Last year, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development reported a huge 10-year decline in reading, math, and science performance among 15-year-olds globally. So this is happening everywhere. This is just, this is not an America problem. Everybody's attention spans have gone to crap. Just crap. Where's my pen? Fired up. I really am fired up. Attention span of goldfish. Um, going to get into Gene at the end. Going to talk about body cams. A lot to cover. Uh, before I go any further, I do want to thank you guys, the viewers, the listeners, the uh, the what's wrongers, as I like to call them, for uh, listening, for all the feedback on the Jay Leno podcast, episode 112, for all the podcasts. Uh, if you want to keep in touch, the email is what's wrong at orneyadams.com, and I, I will be going over fan emails in a little bit. Okay? In a little bit. But first, let me go over this. Because my entire life, I have been a, in regards to Van Halen, you know the group Van Halen, Jump? If you're uh, younger than me, you might not know them. Uh, Great band. Real rock and roll. Well, I grew up with uh, Diamond Dave as the uh, lead singer, and he was just just great. And then all of a sudden, this guy, Sammy Hagar, takes over because they got into a fight. Because uh, Diamond Dave, David Lee Roth, got into a fight with the band, and uh, so he quit. So then they bring in this guy, uh, Sammy Hagar, who I I, I just knew him for uh, Cabo Wabo or whatever, his uh, tequila. He was an uh, early adapted to tequila, much like or Orny Adams here. And uh, I f fancied myself my entire life a never Sammy Hagar. When it comes to Van Halen, I was a never Sammy Hagar. And then I heard this. And I hear this. Often, uh, when I'm listening to the, the live station on Sirius XM, I hear this song a lot. And this is a song that, for some reason, if you, when you listen to this clip on headphones, it's very clear. Not as clear. Oh, I wanted to do it so I could stop the song. Let's see if I can do that right now. Yeah, I want to do pause. Okay, so now, listen to this. This is Sammy Hagar. Didn't know he was so evolved. But you're going to learn something. You're going to learn something really important because tomorrow may not never come. Tomorrow may not never come. Listen to this. This is uh, Panama, which I think was originally a Diamond Dave song. Oh, here we go. We were looking forward to this show. We were off last night, sitting around here in Fresno. Well, what is there to do in Fresno? My headphones just fell off. <laughs> That's what happened. Was when I was sitting around thinking about tonight, the boys in the band were having a party over at the hotel. They had about 15 ugly chicks up there. Yeah, they had 15 chicks. In my room watching TV. Okay, so let me let me paint what's going on now. They're in Fresno. 
There's apparently not much to do in Fresno. And uh, he's sitting in his room worried about tomorrow night. The band's got 15 effing chicks and they're partying. Why didn't I go into music? Stupid, I picked comedy. I agree. I see the problem is, is I learned my lesson real quick because I was worried about tonight, last night. And last night, I should have been worried about last night. And the night before that, I should have been worried about that night. Because worrying about tomorrow is a bunch of shit. Because tomorrow may not never come. Tomorrow, there's no guarantee about tomorrow. Help tomorrow. Tomorrow may not never come. You know what I'm saying? I hear yesterday, you. Yesterday, shit. Yesterday, that's history. That's then gone. Yesterday, it worked nothing. It's gone, man. It's all you got to worry about. It's right here, right now. That's right. How can you not agree with that? Sammy Hagar from Panama yeah, but I was always a, uh, I was, and thank you, Eric uh, Stoltz, for helping to edit that clip and get all the curse out. There's a lot of swearing, a lot of naughty words used by, you know, for a guy that's not partying with the uh, 15 effing chicks in the hotel room, a lot of language, a lot of colorful language. Um, yeah, because uh, the quote I love is, because tomorrow may not never come. Uh, I don't know how many negatives are in there, but uh, I think what he's trying to say is tomorrow might not happen. So live for today. Don't sit in the hotel room. He should have been with the the 15 chicks. Anyway, David Lee Roth, the songs that he had, they were my favorite. Jump, Running with the Devil, Hot for Teacher, Panama, Ain't Talking About Love, Eruption, and the cover of the Kinks song by Ray Davies, written in 1964, You Really Got Me. But they were fun. Eddie Van Halen on guitar and uh, 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 Diamond David Lee Roth jumping around with his tights. Not enough tights in stand-up comedy. I've noticed that. I've always said that. More tights. We need more tights in stand-up comedy. Mm. Let's do clank and coffee, headphones dropping. It's a music... It's a uh, audio nightmare over here uh, in Big Shasta. In Big, Big Shasta. Let's do some fan letters, and then I'm, I, I will talk about uh, Gene and uh, just really an unfortunate incident that almost prevented him from coming to my show. Almost. Oh, do I have the clip to play? Where's that clip? Yeah, maybe I don't have that clip. Right now. Maybe this is it. Uh, all right, let's see if this is the clip for the gene. I, I just want to be prepared. I don't, you know, I don't have a producer on standby. So, uh, yeah, skip this ad. Skip this ad. All right, I'll, I'll, te- I'll tease the gene clip. Uh, this is from the news. Larchmont, e- Larchmont Man. If you don't know Larchmont, Larchmont Village, uh, I can't even say it with my accent, is a r- upscale area of Los Angeles. Larchmont Man's ear sliced off in violent attack outside his home. So stay tuned for that. Let's go over some of these uh, emails from fans. The first one, which is really under the category of uh, tomorrow, because tomorrow may not never come. Okay, that's the theme. Should be the title of the podcast, but it's too long. Tomorrow may not never come. That's still too long. All right, I'll have to think about it. But I got this email. And this one actually, it it made me kind of emotional, if if I will be honest. Because a lot of the times I do this, I do stand up, and I can see the audience that night enjoying it. But then we post clips and uh, I, I do this podcast, and people feel connected in a way that sometimes I need to be reminded about. And sometimes I also need to be reminded about how great I have it. I'm lucky in so many ways, okay? So this is from Patty. P 
P-A-T-T-I, not P-A-T-T-I-E, which is what I responded to her with as, hi, Patty. I misspelled her name after this beautiful email she sent me. Uh, she said, I can't stop watching you. My oldest son, Jeff, died five years ago from a heart condition at 36. Jeff loved to laugh, and we laughed together over ridiculous things. I have to say, I wish he could have seen you. We both were too busy managing grocery stores to watch, like I can now. I'm 62, and losing my son destroyed me. I'm slowly getting better. I taught my son to work hard, but I forgot to teach him how to go home and rest. You absolutely make me smile, and Jeff would have cracked up too. Thank you for you. I need more laughter from you. Jeff took me to Denny's every Sunday morning for a breakfast and coffee. I can certainly see us laughing about your show. Thank you. Now, when she says uh, uh, Jeff would have, uh, uh, you absolutely make me solid, Jeff would have cracked up. We don't know that. I, I got to say, uh, you know, I did a show once and Richard Pryor's fiance was there. Uh, Richard was dead of, uh, at the time, of course. And she said, Richard would have loved you. And I thought, I, I wonder if Richard would want you going around uh, telling people that he loved them. Because who knows? Richard might have hated me. Did Jeff might have hated me too, but let's be honest. <laughs> Unlikely. Unlikely. <laughs> Richard Pryor would have loved me, and uh, Jeff, the uh, grocery store manager, would have loved me. I, I, I do wonder if Pryor would have liked me. Uh, anyway. So I wrote back, Patty, misspelled her name. I just read this email and uh, made me emotional. This email says so much. I'm sorry about Jeff. And hopefully he is laughing with you in heaven, as corny as that sounds. And it is corny, but maybe she believes that. She can feel it. But who knows? Maybe, I said. I hope to see you at one of my shows. I'm always, you know, always selling. I, and please keep laughing and going to Denny's. Do you mind if I share this on my podcast? And she said, ah, oh, thank you so much. No, I don't mind if you share it. Maybe someone will smile, be grateful for each minute with their loved one, and hopefully made another human being laugh. So she's, she's giving forward. She wants you to know that tomorrow may not never come. And for your loved one. Oh, is it leaf blower time in the podcast 27 minutes in? Holy cow. It is unbelievable. It's not even leaf blower day. Yesterday was neighborhood leaf blower day. So, anyway, Patty, thank you. And I hope you listen to this podcast. I hope you enjoy this podcast. And I hope it makes you smile. I hope everything makes you smile. And I, I can't imagine that feeling of losing somebody, you know, losing a son. I don't know. I've never had kids. But it, the attachment, it, it seems, you know, obviously, obviously a lot. This, I, I, I just can't believe that. Leaf, I just want to yell. I just want to yell. Look at it's. Yeah, shut it off. They banned gas leaf blowers. Okay, here's another email. This is from John, a.k.a. Dog Boy. Oh, this guy was at my show. I, I, I had a show Saturday night, and I, I want to thank everyone that came to my show uh, because it was really, really... All right, I'm shutting the door. Hold on. It's going to screw up the lighting, but hang on, everybody. It's going to be a bang. Does that make any difference? No. No. None. Ah, oh, God. It's like I just want to pause it until this is over. This is really what's wrong with Orny Adams. I've got to take this into a studio. I've got to. I mean, what? This is. Did you hear all the noise on the Jay Leno podcast? It was embarrassing. Trucks backing up. I mean, I love how quaint it is that I do this, you know, in this Shasta. But it's like oh, the challenges, the lighting challenges, the audio challenges. Oh, I don't want to complain. Even though this is what's wrong with Oni Adams, I don't want to complain. I don't want to complain. Okay, so I did a show, and there was a very drunk woman from Brazil in the front row. You should know that. Uh, big fan. They flew in from Florida for the show. Uh, this guy, Mike. Mike F. comes to a ton of my shows. If you listen to my podcast, you would have gotten an extra prize. You would have gotten a shirt that I took from Howie Mandel that was too corny for me to wear, but he's from Florida, so he can wear it. It would be perfect for him. And he didn't listen to the podcast and say, I heard on the podcast that you have a, a shirt for me, so he didn't get it. 
but he bought 50 items from my merch table. 50 items at full price. And guess what? I gave him a sticker. I gave him a couple of free items. I gave him a signed poster. I gave him some extra shirts. I gave him a hat. And uh, he flew him from Florida. He flies all over the place and comes to see my shows. I don't know where he gets the money from. He's just white trash. And he just has all his money to come see my shows and buy all my merch. So I think that's great. I think that's great. And I call him white trash to his face and he laughs. Because guess what? We can laugh at stuff. It's okay. Laughter is okay. Uh, but this guy, John, was at the show. And John... Might be one of my favorite new fans. No offense, Gene. But this guy, listen to this. Hi, Orny. It's John, a.k.a. Dog Boy. Dog Boy was his nickname in high school because he had he was hairy. Uh, from seeing you Saturday night, uh, you were hilarious and brought joy and happiness to both my wife and I after a hard week. Sorry that lady next to us kept interrupting. You know, and she wasn't interrupting in a malicious way. She thought she was adding to the show. So it's hard to throw those people out. It's also hard to throw somebody out that flew in from Florida and is with the guy that bought 50 items at full price and got a free sticker. You handled it well. Thank you for letting me in on some of the jokes about the eggs and how they, uh, and the French fries and the back and forth. We went back and forth with some stuff and uh, we were on the same page. So that was cool. Right, dog boy? His email continues. I enjoyed the show and can't wait to see you again. I'm hoping to see you in December. Uh, I think in Irvine. Love your shirts. Uh, 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 you make me laugh. You inspire me in all you do. It's been a rough road for you, but you keep at it. And I think it's made you, in my opinion, the best comic of our time. Well, my voice just broke up. I, I, I guess I didn't read this paragraph. I'm not too sure I would have read this on the podcast. But he said, it's been a rough road for you. It's been a rough road for you. What does he mean? It's been a rough road for you. Yeah, it has been a rough road, but it's a rough road for a lot of people, I guess. It's been a rough road for you, but you keep at it, and I think it's made you, in my opinion, the best comic of our time. Hmm. That's humbling. You don't preach about politics, and you let us look in a mirror at a society... At society, you turn disgust for humanity into laughter. Thanks, Bob. It's been a pleasure to see you and meet you. And then he asked, what song or band that brings great memories for you? I asked because music is powerful and your interview with Mark Mann, there you go, Mark, you got a shout out, made me wonder because you make stories with music and music videos. Um, Thanks, dog boy. And I sent him only because it, it, it evokes a, a particular, like, full embodied memory of my childhood. It gives me some sort of shiver. It, like, brings me to a place where I'm blocked, but I just feel, I feel like I'm in high school again. And it's that song from uh, Tears for Fears, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Is that what it is? And I, I would play it, but uh, then I get dinged for some sort of stupid rights violation. So that's what I sent him. Here's a third email that came in to what's wrong at orneyadams.com. I encourage everybody to keep in touch. I read them all. And sometimes I write back just one sentence, but I read it. I appreciate it. I just don't have the energy. I apologize. I wish I did. I spend all day answering uh, emails on uh, whether it's Instagram or correspondence on Facebook, uh, through my webpage, on my YouTube channel, all the uh, comments under videos. I appreciate it. I really do. I know how fortunate I am. So this, and I'm not going to have time for this one. This is from uh, Jenny. She calls herself JJ. And she, I think she's from Norway. Uh, hi, Orny. Anyway, I was wondering if you could talk a little on your podcast about how you first got into stand-up. I'm curious to know when you started out and what it was like the first time you got up on stage. Were you scared, excited? Uh, did you always know this is what you wanted to do? Like, when you were a kid, did you ever dream about becoming an astronaut? No. Or fireman? No. That's for Gene. Or something like that. Uh, I wanted to be a doctor or a vet. I think I ended up... I think I ended up in nursing for a while. I th I think... Oh, she said, I wanted to be a doctor or a vet, I think. Like, she doesn't remember she uh, ended up in nursing or not? In elder care. Uh, she originally went to art school. 
And uh, she said, it's funny how life turns out. I, I, I'll i say this quickly, but I need to talk about it probably on a full episode. Uh, I knew from a young age, I always had a sense that I was going to be in the public space, a public person. I didn't know how. I was always funny. I thought you're funny one or two times and then you just get your hand in a sitcom. Boy, was I wrong. Boy, was I wrong, huh? Uh, yeah, I remember as a kid, I was at the Portnoy's house, these neighbors, and I was stringing along this story. I was taking facts and I was making a whole story around it about like traveling or country or whatever it was. And I remember the parents were laughing. I'm like, wow, if the parents think this is funny, this is probably funny. It's probably why my audience is older. Because I always play to the older, people older than me, because I have such respect and reverence for older people. And so I knew from a young age, I just sensed something. I just sensed it. And so, yeah, I did it. And I wasn't scared. I've never been scared to get up on stage. I feel more comfortable on stage than at parties like last night. <clears throat> I feel in control. I enjoy it. I get anxious sometimes about shows, I'm anxious about flying to Canada, and if I even know what time my flight is leaving because they operate our military time. I mean, I'm on the American version of Air Canada. Could you give us the times on a regular clock, a 24-hour clock, whatever you call it, conventional time? Um, so, yeah, I get anxious about getting there in the shows, and in Canada, I'm doing a TV taping. So I get, uh, you know, in my head, like, what? I don't even know what I'm going to do yet. It's Wednesday. I'm taping this Friday, and I haven't mapped it out like I used to. I told that story on the podcast about how I went into Montreal, and I, I, I just got up on stage, and I was funny. I thought, if, if I'm funny, I can just be funny on TV. And I wanted to have this looseness. So, yeah, I get anxious, but I don't get nervous. I feel, I really feel at home. I feel like this is what I'm, I'm supposed to be doing. But at times I, I wonder, boy, my hair's lopsided. You can't, how do I, I'm looking in the monitor and uh, I screwed up my hair. It was good. It was an eight out of 10. And then I started to play with it. And, uh, oh my God, everything's backwards. When I look into the monitor, this is so funny. Uh, oh, this is life. Like, what are you guys doing right now when you're listening and I'm playing with my hair? I want this part to be up right over here. This is, oh, this is so funny. I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose my mind. This is, all right, I give up. Uh, okay, so let's talk about Let's talk about Gene. Gene comes to all my shows. I, I played the clip from the beginning of Gene. This is Gene. If, if you want to know what Gene looks like, if you watch my special more than loud, this is this is Gene. He's the example of the guy in the Hawaiian shirt. And I say, uh, like these uh, losers in Hawaiian shirts. And I point at Gene. He puts his arms up in the air, all exasperated. Look at this. <laughs> That's Gene right there. I'll play it again. That's Gene. One more time for Gene. Good sport. Comes to all the shows. This is, this is his daughter who is or was a Patreon subscriber. And this is a news report of her boyfriend in large... You got to see this. He was attacked. Look at this picture. Wow. He was attacked by a guy trying to break into his car and he slid the, from the back of his head over his ear, split his ear in two. He's scarred for life. This picture is really disturbing. Really disturbing. But here is a, a news report. Where is it? Here it is. This is from uh, ABC7. And he's, it's, 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 it's tough to watch, but I'll talk you through this. Here we go. Or maybe we're not going to go. Over. A man who heard noises out. Okay, here we go. Six were learning about a disturbing and vicious attack in a local neighborhood. A man who heard noises outside his large spot home went out to investigate. And what happened next almost cost him his life. I would assume where Leon Suter has the story. It's very traumatizing. I keep uh, having uh, flashbacks of the hit and like 
the see sound the of my skin ripping because it was it was, it was a gruesome sound, sound. of a skin ripping. Gruesome scar across Jesus Balderas Alfaro's head. His ear severed after he was stabbed by a man smashing the windshield. I gotta stop went- this for a second. Uh, here's the update. Looks like I've got my hair back to about eighty percent. Okay, back to Jesus being slashed. Year old's car. Blood started coming out and gushing out like fast. And at the moment, I was paranoid because I thought he hit my neck. And I know when you get hit in the neck, you only got a couple seconds or even minutes to survive. He was rushed to the hospital and underwent surgery to save his ear. I'm just lucky that it didn't go through my neck or anything like that, close to my artery or anything like that. It mm. happened early Monday morning on Raleigh Street in Largemont. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you got to see this. The sound of glass. Largemont Village. These are these are million dollar homes. These are gorgeous homes, manicured lawns, and there, there, they, he comes out. He heard somebody. You know, he thought breaking into his car. Shattering and went to investigate. Thieves had stolen all of his tires a few weeks earlier, and he was afraid his car was being targeted again. Right here, he just went like this. Oh, God, uh, yeah, here's another problem I have with this uh, video. The Jesus is wearing a Jimmy Kimmel Live shirt. Now, if you're, if you're attacked and the news comes to cover it, why aren't you wearing an Orny Adams shirt? And I sent Gene, I said, Gene, what's going on? Why is the kid wearing Jimmy Kimmel? I mean, it's horrible, he got attacked, but what? where's the, the Orny Adams gear? This could have been my moment. <laughs> and uh, Gene immediately went online and bought two new shirts, phobie fear of being included shirt, shirts from the OrnyAdams.com website. And uh, he said, I'll make sure that never happens again. All right, back to the story about Jesus. And then it just... He says the suspect, who appeared to be homeless, disappeared into the shadows. But I went to go see the damage, and I had my back turned from the way he was, uh, I guess, walking away from. And uh, I just remembered feeling a punch and, like, uh, my skin rip as he pulled his hand back. The LAPD now investigating if the random attack may be connected to any other recent stabbing cases. Jesus says he wants to warn the public to be oh. alert, afraid the suspect could strike again. He did it without hesitation, no, you know, nothing, just poor go kid. for it. I'm it's just going to be kid. more vigilant and uh, aware of my surroundings. And wearing only I'm And sure. uh, if anything, you know, you know, material stuff could be replaced, but a life you can't. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow might never come. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what's happened. I don't know if it's just Los Angeles. I don't know what's going on in the world, but this guy could have just run or ran away. He was banging on his car uh, window. Looked like he was trying to smash it, or he did smash it, and they had stolen his tires a few weeks early. What the hell is going on in this world? What the hell is going on? I. It's scary. Because your instinct is to run outside and go, hey, what the hell are you doing? But now, you know, I don't honk anymore. I don't think anybody should honk anymore. Honk should only be preceded by an accident. I don't honk. I have no ego when I drive anymore. I'm afraid to say anything uh, to anybody because of this. And I don't know if it's this big city. I don't know if it's post-COVID. Like, I, I can't wait for the studies to come out. Like, what has happened to us post-COVID? What, what has happened? Part of us are trying to get more done than we've ever done in our lives, trying to overachieve. We have bigger to-do lists than we've ever had. Then there's another part of us, part of the community, just doesn't want to work. They want to sit on, uh, around inside doing some online uh, s- sort of work. They're going to go viral or they're gamers. They're in front of a screen. They want to, they're in the screen economy, we'll call it. And, and then there's a group of people that just think you can go into businesses and steal. And there's smashing grabs, people stealing alternators, people breaking into cars and then wanting to, st- you know, stab, stab somebody. Who says, hey, could you not break into my car? Do you mind? Oh, don't touch my hair. So the world, I don't know what is happening. It's scary. It's discouraging. It's exhausting to always be on guard. You can't, there's no discourse anymore. We're not having a conversation anymore. I have the right to break into your car. You say something, I'm going to slash your ear. That's where we're at. This poor kid. 
He's in his 30s. By the way, I asked Gene, they catch the guy? Nope. Nope. I'd be driving around. Let me tell you something. I'd be driving around in my car, even if all the tires were gone, even if the windshield was busted. I'd be looking for this guy day and night. Day and night. Oh, I'd be looking. And it, it must be on security camera. I should have asked him. There's a million cameras on streets now. So I, I, I'm telling this story, one, because Gene is a, uh, a, a fan, but, you know, he's like a friend that I see in the audience all the time. Comes to all my shows uh, that he can in L.A. He was a former fireman. In fact, when Jesus got uh, stabbed, slashed, he got him into a, a better hospital. They actually airlifted him on Gene's recommendation. And, you know, maybe his life was saved. It's, it sucks we have to live like this. It sucks we have to, every day, just conflict, turmoil, politics, like division. Division, 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 division. Why can't we get our shit together as a human race? Why can't we all come together, work together, as, as like the people making, you know, iPhones, more concern is put into, does the next version of the iPhone have a better camera than saving humanity, starving people, wars, aggression? What the, what is left? It's hard to get up on stage sometimes and make people laugh, knowing, on, knowing what's going on outside, knowing the amount of division we have. I, I liked it better when I was a little blind to everything. That's for sure. So, I... Uh, I'll end on this. I'll end on this. Uh, because there is so much crime. And I talk about it on stage, me calling 911 and uh, them recording on the body cams. And I want to know what rights do we have? What rights do we have? Let me look at the show run through to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. I want to know what rights do we have when police enter our homes? What, what, what rights do we have? Because I was watching this show. And don't ever forget, tomorrow might never come. I was watching this show on the uh, ID channel. And they had a body cam. And in the body cam, they went into somebody's house and you get to see everything about their house, which I don't think is fair. I don't think that's fair. I, I don't think, I think you should have a right to privacy. I think if the police enter your home, that, and this is recorded, this is on my TV, I'll walk you through it. I took my iPhone, I recorded the screen, and th this, these people, whoever they are, I guess they're suspects, and may have, I, this probably went to trial. Maybe the person was convicted. But you get to see their full home, and they were hoarders, okay? So if there's a crime in my home, okay, I don't want the police coming in and putting, the, put, putting video up. Look at this. This is from the ID channel. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think the show is called, uh, and it says Evil Lives Here, but that's for a, an upcoming show. But the video starts with the police say, do you mind if I check, uh, check the house? Do you mind if I check the house? Sure, we have to yeah, Okay. This audio is horrible. Whenever you enter a home, you, know, you have no idea what you're going this into. This is a cop. Um, it's Elvis Cook. Somebody else's home. We don't know what they have hiding, what weapons they might have. <laughs> I'm just going to make sure I go into here. Look at this. Look so at this home. At this point, I'm relying on my It's just piles phone. and piles Intrating, and piles of stuff. Eyes, you know, if my... You like barely see the floor. Uh, he starts noticing anything. If he hears anything, he's, he's going in there with the dog. Anything. The dog's about he to throw up. Indications that there's something wrong. Something wrong. They're hoarders. There's one of those chairs, that, metal chairs that wrestlers use. They crack over someone's head. I mean, why is this? Why do I have the right to see this? That's what I want to know. Where does privacy begin and end with public records? Like when I called 911, why, why can that end up on a, in a documentary? Anyway, it goes on and on and Officer on. Cook it's clears on. The house. He clears the house. Officer Cook should have cleaned the house. That's what he should have done. Unbelievable. I just hit the wrong button. I love when I hit the wrong button. I'm trying to bring it home and I hit the wrong button. Uh, listen. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I in this podcast? Uh, 
Okay, we need to get her back here. Uh, the deal is that tomorrow may not never come, or whatever the Sammy Hagar quote uh, is uh, from that song. But I want to thank everybody. This is the worst ending I've ever had of my podcast. I'll tell you when this podcast really sort of derailed was when I tried to adjust my hair and I never recovered. It was never back to where it was. Uh, and, and, and that bothers me. That bothers me. So tomorrow I'm jumping on a plane. I'm going to Halifax, Canada, and I'm doing a show. I'm doing uh, at the Spats Theater. I'm doing a show that's taped for the Halifax Comedy Festival. Then I'm going to Ottawa, Canada, and so on, and so on, and so on. And then I'm going to Boston to be with uh, my parents. And, you know, that that uh, Sammy Hagar quote reminds me of that. You've got to be with your loved ones as, as much as you can. And I live in Los Angeles, and I feel completely disconnected at times. And I wonder, how long do I have to stay here? That's probably the next discussion I'm going to have on the next What's Wrong with Orny Adams. Uh, if my guest isn't Kato, I'm going to talk about how long do I need to stay in this, this shitty city with people stabbing people in the ears for saying, hey, could you not break into my car? How much longer do I have to endure and suffer in Los Angeles? In fact, I ran into a comic last night. Uh, I won't say who because he told me privately, but he moved out of Los Angeles. He, he couldn't take it anymore. He was lonely. It's a lonely city. It's a one big office park. Everybody thinks they're in show business. And I don't know what I'm in. I'll tell you that much. What's wrong with Orny Adams? Episode 113. What's his name, Kev? Thank you to Eric Stoltz for mastering the audio, for helping me edit, for telling me I'm great. <laughs> I gave him the greatest gift of all time. I got Jay Leno to mention his name, to say, Eric Stoltz, yeah, I did that for you, Eric. Don't you forget it. Well, listen, thank you to listeners. Thank you to everyone that rates this uh, podcast and shares the podcast and watches my videos online. I'll be releasing a ton of clips of me and Jay Leno. Also, I'm now in in honor, in celebration of my second special, Takes the Third. I'm releasing, it hit a million views on YouTube. I'm now releasing clips. I released one Monday. I released one today. I'm releasing one on Friday. So I'm, I'll be releasing More Than Loud and Takes the Third clips. And I hope you share them. I hope you come back. Keep in touch. What's wrong at OrniAdams.com. This video is on my Patreon. Then it goes to YouTube. And also, you can go to Team What's Wrong. The headphones fell off again because I'm not putting them over my head because I don't want to mess up my ears. Tired of this shit. We'll see you again for the next one. Thank you, everybody.